Hey everyone, it's Sarah and today I am back with part one of transition fragrances going from winter to spring. So I've got 10 fragrances here. I'm probably gonna do 10 fragrances in each part. With these transition fragrances videos, I can never just like limit it to a manageable amount because I've got so many good ones. But anyways, I've got 10 here. I'm gonna jump right in. So I'm going to start with one of my, uh, one of my favorites. Um, well, I could say that about every single one of these fragrances, but this is the Swan Maiden from Dreamhouse Curio. This is one of those fragrances that there is something so comforting about this because there, there's something slightly nostalgic smelling, something that smells like my childhood that I would never be able to put my finger on but it's something very comforting that reminds me of my childhood. It's a very light, musky floral. And I mean light in the light musky part. It's not a light fragrance by any means. It's a really beautiful floral scent that I don't wanna say it smells vintage and I don't wanna say it smells old fashioned because that's not it because it smells like a very modern scent. It doesn't smell dated in any way but it's got this old world kind of smell to it. Like this is something that you could have smelled on somebody a hundred years ago, but it's totally modern. It doesn't smell, it's, I'm, not, I'm not explaining this right and it's hard to explain this one, but it's a really beautiful, kind of slightly musky floral. It's a little bit sweet, it's not too sweet. It's, dense but not heavy it's this is the perfect time of year to wear fragrances like this um, fragrances where and I know for me with transition fragrances I have a very hard time letting go of my heavier fragrances because I am drawn to heavier fragrances that's what I like to wear um, so I have a very hard time like letting go of my winter fragrances when it starts getting hot out and it's getting hot. I told you we were gonna have an early spring. It's like 78, 80 degrees out today. I'm so excited. It is absolutely gorgeous. And fragrances like this is exactly what I'm looking for because this is a perfume that will to would be perfectly fine in the heat, but is still gonna give me that cozy, slightly heavy feeling that I love in my winter scents. It's fantastic. I've never smelled anything quite like this. You're definitely not gonna smell many fragrances like this on the market. Um, and I say that, again, It's I almost wanna describe it as vintage smelling, but it's not. It's very modern smelling. But it smells like very old world. I don't know, kind of like, and this is a weird, this is gonna be a very weird explanation, but kind of like how when you see a TV show that is, maybe sci-fi or maybe like fantasy-ish and it's set in like modern day but they're wearing like Elizabethan clothes. Kind of like that situation. That's kind of like what this perfume is. I know that's weird but that's the best way I can describe it. Anyways, that is the Swan Maiden from Dreamhouse Securio. It is fantastic. This is definitely going to be um, on my in my rotation. Okay, next I have a vanilla scent. I love this vanilla scent. I very rarely talk about this one because I forget that I even have it. Um, this is Vanilla Island from Pacifica. I love this scent. I've had a bottle of Vanilla Island in my collection since I remember when it came out. I wanna say it was like, it was before 2010. I wanna say it was like maybe two, I can't even, I'll, I'll have it on the screen for you um, when it came out, but I want to say it was in 2000, like the late 2010s. Is that the late 2000s? I don't even know how you say that. Anyways, this is a really beautiful, oh, it's a really beautiful, creamy, kind of slightly coconutty vanilla. It's custardy, it's warm, it's really decadent smelling. Um, this does not have the greatest performance, I'm not gonna lie. That's probably why I don't reach for it or why I forget that I have it. Um, but this layered over my EOS Vanilla Cashmere Lotion is just, is gonna be so yummy. Um, and it's gonna be just such a perfect transition vanilla. 
So anyways, that is Pacific Island Vanilla. So good. You can get a matching body lotion too, and I bet if you layered the two, it would really help with the longevity. I love this one though. Okay, this next one, this is one that I just, I just got this, but I can already tell I'm gonna be wearing this probably into the summer. Um, this is the Guerlain Shalimar Millicene Iris, and I'm obsessed with this perfume. This is a sweet, buttery, sweet, buttery, fluffy, decadence, iris perfume. It's so just yummy and decadent and sweet. Again, it's dense without being heavy. Um, so there's like enough body to it that it still feels kind of like a wintertime scent or like a heavier scent, but it's sweet and light enough to hold up in the heat. I haven't worn this one in hot weather yet though, so I'm very excited to wear this in, in warmer weather. But yeah, I'm like, I'm slightly obsessed with this perfume right now, so this will definitely be a transition fragrance for me. I love it. Um, I'm also really interested to see what the longevity of this is gonna be in the heat, um, whether it's gonna do better or worse than it does in the cold. Uh, right now I get about three-ish hours out of it or so, three to four maybe, but yeah, I love this. I'm obsessed with it and I will be carrying this on into spring. So that is the Guerlain Shalimar Millicene Iris fragrance. Okay, this next one, this is a Chloe fragrance and this is the one that I love wearing this in transition seasons, going from winter to spring and also going from summer to fall. Um, this is Chloe Nomad, just the original Chloe Nomad, the EDP formulation. It's a pretty heavy scent. It doesn't look like it would be in this packaging and in this bottle, but it really is. It's a pretty heavy scent. It's got Mirabelle Plum in it. It's got Oak Moss in it. And it's like a heavy, I don't want to say musky floral, like a, it's a heavy, I'll say really modern Shepra type fragrance. It's really, really gorgeous. This thing is an absolute monster. Um, you don't even have to wear that much. That's why my bottle is still so full. Um, I've got a good little dent in it, but you don't have to spray much of this on. A few sprays and you're good, and you will smell like this for 10 plus hours. It is an absolute monster of a fragrance. It's a perfect transition fragrance because it's not too, um, it's not too much of a spring fragrance yet. It's st this one you're definitely still holding on to winter, but it's light enough that it feels good to bring to kind of bring into spring. I hope that makes sense, but I love this one. Um, this is my favorite one for transition seasons because it's just, it gives you that heaviness that you're still craving or that you're starting to crave going into fall, but it's still light enough to kind of be fine in hot weather. So anyways, that is Chloe Nomad, just the original, the absolute one I only wear in the winter time because that one is actually really, really heavy. Um, okay, this next one, I cannot wait to pull this one out. This is a fragrance from Genre, and this is this is Minnie Mouse. So this is their clone of Minnie Moore from House of Siage. Beautiful Larive sent this to me. Gosh, I think last, it was either late last summer or early fall. And actually, I wanna say it was early fall. So I definitely wore it a couple of times, but gosh, it's so good. But I haven't worn it since and I cannot wait. This is another one that this one is decadent enough smelling that it will still give me those like heavier feels that I'm craving, but it's got a really bright raspberry note in it and yeah, I think some citrus is in the top, but the raspberry is definitely the star of the show. This is like raspberries and cream and this is gonna be a perfect transition fragrance because again, it's decadent enough smelling that it's still giving me that heaviness that I crave, but with that super bright, sweet, candy-like raspberry note in it, um, it's definitely like reaching for spring. So super excited to pull this one out and start giving it some love. I love this one. Oh, it's so good. I have got to, somebody please tell me how I get on the genre email list so that I can order perfumes. I know Larive told me, but I cannot for the life of me figure out where I 
can sign up to get on the lists. So if you're watching this, Larive, please let me know. Yeah, I'm like dying. And also my my other fragrance friend, Susan, she definitely wants some bottles too. So if I could figure out how to just order myself so that I don't have to ask somebody to do it for me, I would love that so much. But anyways, that is many more from Genre. Okay, this next one, this is another one that I love as a transition fragrance, either from uh, winter to spring or from summer to fall. This is Calvin Klein Escape. This is definitely a perfume that can be worn any time of the year, but I love it as a transition scent because it's got so, it's like sweet and light and fresh, but it's also, it also has like a density to it that feeds that need that I have for heavier fragrances. When I smell this one now, I get a really strong, almost like a tea note. It almost smells like sweet tea with lemon in it. But then you also get that kind of aquatic thing that it has. It's sweet, it's fresh. I love everything about this scent. It takes me straight back to elementary school to six, when I was in sixth grade. And everybody and their mother was wearing this even when we were still in elementary school. I love it. I just love it so much. It's such a unique scent, such a good quality scent, and performs so well. I love this perfume. So anyways, that is Calvin Klein Escape. I love the one for men too. I think Escape for Men is so good. Okay, next is this fragrance here from Matthew Meleg. This is the uh, Meleg Gion perfume. This is the winter rose one. I am obsessed with this perfume. This is my rose, my current rose obsession. I cannot get enough of this perfume. Um, this is rose and it's an all natural perfume. So he made this with all naturals. There's nothing synthetic in this. Really expensive, very high quality materials. I can't remember, I think he uses, I can't remember if he uses Turkish rose or Bulgarian rose. It smells more like a Turkish rose to me. There's some sandalwood in this. It's bright and sweet and fresh. It's rose, but it doesn't smell like a, a literal rose bush. It's not at all a mature smelling rose. It's fantastic. I cannot say enough good things about this fragrance and I'm obsessed with it. And this will be a perfect transition scent because the you get the most beautiful, sweet, delicate, fresh rose, but it's not overly fresh smelling. It definitely has some like a sweet body to it. So it's just, again, it's going to be perfect for transition for me because um, I wore this in the dead of the winter and it was phenomenal in the dead of the winter. It held up beautifully in the cold. Um, now I'm excited to see what this is going to be like in the warm weather. I just think that the rose is going to sing in warmer weather. Yeah, I just, I love it. I love it so much. So anyways, that is the Matthew Meleg uh, Gion Winter Rose Fragrance. Phenomenal. Okay, this next one, I usually wear this in transition, in the transition seasons because um, this is not heavy enough for, to be a winter scent for me and it can't, it doesn't tolerate the heat very well. Um, so this is usually one that I wear when it's going from winter to spring or from summer to fall. Um, I'm, I like it more from winter to spring though. This is the fragrance from Zara. This is the MSK 004 NTL. Um, and this is basically like candied almond and musk. So it's a clean kind of white Egyptian musk kind of smelling scent, but with a candied almond note in it. And it's yummy. It's really beautiful. But yeah, I tried to wear this this past winter um, and it just isn't heavy enough for me. I need really like heavy hitter fragrances in cold weather. Um, and this just doesn't cut it. And it also doesn't hold up super well. So yeah, I'm going to try layering my, my Sweet Essentials Heliotrope Oil under this scent to see what the combination is going to be like. I think it's just going to be fantastic. But yeah, I love this scent. It's such a yummy one. Um, such a good transition fragrance. Sadly, it just doesn't perform super well for me. Um, it used to, which is what I don't, when I first got this, I used to wear this to work because it would hang around for a good long time on me. But I don't know, the last few times that I've worn it, it just, it hasn't, it hasn't performed well for me. 
But anyways, that is Zara MSK004 NTL. Okay, this is also the time of year that I am so excited to pull out my Kim Kardashian Pure Honey scent. Um, I am low-key obsessed with this perfume. There's something about this that smells like something from my childhood. I say that every time I talk about this. I could not tell you what it is, but this is so nostalgic smelling to me. So nostalgic, like early to mid 80s smelling to me because it reminds me of something from my small childhood, like I was really little. I love this. This is the most beautiful honey and white floral scent. It's so good. I've turned on so many people to this fragrance. So many people have bought this and told me how much they absolutely love it. And I understand why. Like, it is so divine and it is, it smells so much more expensive than it actually is. And I just love it. It's so good. This is so good. Layered with things. It's good on its own. It's just, it's such a little, like, $15 gem. Um, in my opinion, I think this is probably the best Kim Kardashian fragrance. Um, I haven't smelled them all. I've, sm well, obviously I haven't smelled, I probably have smelled maybe five Kim Kardashian fragrances in my life, so I'm probably not qualified to say, but from all of the Kim Kardashian fragrances that I've smelled, this one is definitely my favorite. I love it so much, and this is the perfect time of year to wear this. It's kind of a heavy, syrupy, honeyed floral. And it's just perfect this time of year. I love it. This one I'll wear all season long though. I mean, all the way into fall with this one because it's just so good. You can wear it year round though because I think this is even heavy enough to hold up in the winter time, honestly. It's a pretty heavy scent. I love it. So anyways, that is Kim Kardashian Pure Honey. It is an absolute beast of a fragrance too for being like a $15 fragrance and mine is a huge 3.4 ounce bottle. I think I paid less than $15 for it and it is a monster of a fragrance. Like, I will smell like that for 10, 12 hours at least. It lasts forever. Okay, and then last but not least, this is my favorite time of the year to pull out my, my uh, Guerlain Shalimar Parfum Initial. Yes, this is my favorite time of year for this one. Again, it's heavy enough that it still gives me that kind of winter fragrances feels that I'm looking for but it's got a lightness and a brightness to it because it's got a lot of citruses in the top. So it does have like a lightness and a brightness to it that makes it great for weather that is starting to get warmer. And it is perfection. It is perfect for transitioning from winter to spring. It could work from summer to fall, but I find it to be better from winter to spring. I just love it. This is the time of year that I pull this one out and start wearing it and my liquid is starting to turn bright yellow and I think probably within the next couple of years my liquid will be bright bright yellow. But anyways, I love this scent. It is absolutely beautiful. It is a beast of a fragrance too. It lasts forever. Um, I usually get a good eight hours out of this perfume at least. Ugh, it's such a beautiful version of Shalimar. It's so vanilla heavy, but again, there's a lot of citrus in this one. And you do get a lot of the Shalimar DNA with this one as well. So you get a lot of the Shalimar DNA, but you get a ton of citrus in the top and you get a lot of a really fluffy, creamy vanilla. Well, not, not overly creamy, but like a really fluffy, beautiful vanilla in the base. Again, perfect for a transition. But anyways, that is Guerlain Parfum Initial. I feel like I've been on and on about these fragrances. But anyways, you guys, those are 10 fragrances that I am super excited to start wearing now that it is starting to get warm out. I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.